In another video, I showed how to import airfoil data using splines in a sketch. In this video, I'm going to use a different method. I'm going to import the points into a point array and then create a curve through those points. So I have my part started off and I'm using my aerospace default datums. I have the butt line, the water line, the station. I see my coordinate system origin. And so first off, I want these different airfoils to be either in the butt line plane or parallel to the butt line plane. Right now, my coordinate system that I would use for importing points is oriented incorrectly. I want the XY plane to be within the butt line plane. So I'm going to select the existing coordinate system and I'm going to create a new coordinate system. And for the first section, I'm going to leave it in the same location. But if I go to the orientation tab, here's where I can rotate it. And I want to rotate about the Y axis 90 degrees and let's go to the properties tab I'm going to rename this because it's going to be butt line zero and click the OK button and let's hide the original coordinate system and I take a look at it and I say okay there's XY well I actually want them going in the opposite direction so let's edit definition of this coordinate system and actually the way that I want it, let's change the orientation. Let's change this to minus 90. And click the OK button. And that's the way that I want it to be, X, Y for the data. So that is good for that one. Now let us bring in the data. So if I go to the point command here, we can choose to create points offset from a coordinate system. The first thing I wants me to do is select a coordinate system for the reference and I'm going to use the coordinate system that I created and let's click the import button and I'm going to navigate to where I have that data. Again, it's the C141 and I read in the data for the other different uh, butt line locations but for the first one, let's import this. And we can see the data for the X, Y, and Z located in here. This is good. I will click OK. And let's zoom in. And for the first set of datum points, let's turn on our datum point display. There you can see the points that we have in there. And before I create this point, I'm going to import in a couple of other different uh, sets of points. And I'll explain the method to my madness in a moment. All right, for the next set of points, I'm going to create a, another coordinate system. So let's select the original coordinate system and then create a new coordinate system using the mini toolbar. And I'm going to offset this in the Z value of one and click OK. Now let's create a import a set of points relative to that coordinate system. And actually let's rename this one. This one is going to be at a butt line of 113. I'm just going to rename it that so I can remember that. And I only offset a distance one, but again, I'll explain why I'm doing that later. So let's create points offset from a coordinate system. Let me select my reference coordinate system and choose the import button. And let's grab the other set of points. That's good. Let's click OK. And I'm just going to create one other set. And so let's create, let's select our coordinate system. Let me just select it out of the model tree and then coordinate system. And for the other one, I'm going to offset this a value of two and click OK. And let's create points imported relative to that. And I'm going to click the import button, grab the third section and before I close this dialog box, I just want to explain that, again, that airfoil data is an airfoil coordinate system. So it goes from a value of zero to a value of one. Let me show it in here. Value somewhere in here. There, of one and then one back to zero, which isn't the actual size of the airframe. And so what I'm going to do at this point, after I rename my coordinate system, Let's call this, this one is going to be at a butt line of 426. I'm going to scale the model now just so that these are uh, proportionate to more like what an actual wing would be. 
So to do that, I'm going to go to the operations command and then scale model. Ask me for a value. I'm going to scale this by value of 240. So it would be roughly 20 feet long. And tells me the model will be regenerated. If I expand options, this is where I can scale the absolute accuracy if I want to. If you don't scale the absolute accuracy, it'll end up resulting in a bigger file size. But I'm using relative accuracy by default. I really should change that. Uh, but let's click OK. And the points ended up getting resized as well as the coordinate systems and now I'm going to edit definition of the coordinate systems to what their values should actually be and so this first one is supposed to be at a value of 113.6 and click OK and this one let's edit definition and right now it's a value 480 but this is supposed to be at 426.57 and click the OK button. And so now I have my points created. Let's turn off our coordinate system display and our datum plane display. Now we can create curves through these points. If I go to the datum drop down menu, I can choose curve and then curve through points. And I'm just going to select the datum point feature in order to get the entire array. And just to show you this dashboard, here if I go to placement, Right now it's connecting to previous point using a spline. It's gonna put a nice curve through there. You could also choose straight line. That's the same as using these, toggling between these buttons on the top. If this was adjacent to other geometry, you could choose your end conditions, whether you want them to be tangent or curvature continuous or normal to the reference. And the options tab, well, if we had uh, created this by selecting the point, you can ac actually do something called tweaking the curve, which allows you to basically manipulate the shape. But this is good for this one. Let's hit the check mark and let's repeat that two more times. Datum curve, curve through points. Select my next set of datum points and click the check mark. And datum curve, curve through points and select the third point array and hit the check mark. I no longer need to see the point, so let's unclutter the display. And now, as we saw in a previous video, I could use these points for creating sweep, or excuse me, a blend. Let's click on the blend command, and I'm going to change to selected sections, and on the sections tab, let's select our first uh, set of curves, and here you can see the origin. Let's insert another one and select the second section and insert one more time and select the third section and so there you see how we're getting our blend created from one set of the curves to the other ones and at this point I can hide the actual curves and if you're familiar with the actual shape of a C141 it's not straight on like this it actually ends up uh, angling to the aft of the aircraft. So if I want to start messing around with this, let's select this particular coordinate system and edit definition. And I'm going to end up translating it in the X direction. And let's just go a value of X direction, a value of 40. Now let's make it bigger. Let's do this one, a value of 100 and hit the OK button and there you can see how it's angling back and then for the other one we can edit definition like before and again change the X value if we do this about 25 and click a value of OK and so in that way if I look straight on like this you can see that we're getting the uh, tail excuse me the wing to start angling towards the back and of course I can continue continue playing around with the different values in order to get the taper angle that I want on the wing. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.